another new project. So what is this all about? Myself and Travis from Tabletop CP are doing a fun little challenge to do some winter scatter terrain. We've been chatting for a while, I'm a Patreon of his, his channel is superb, you must go and subscribe if you haven't yet, I'll wait. Good? You back? Thanks. <laughs> go and do it. It's really worth watching his videos. They're really, really good fun. But yeah, we've been chatting for a while and uh, we came up with this idea as something a little fun to do coming towards Christmas. So the idea is six pieces of scatter terrain each and we'll aim to publish the completed projects on Christmas Day. Yes, actually on Christmas Day so that you'll can enjoy it while you're recovering from your over festive season. And hopefully this will give 2020 something of a bit of a boost. So let's have a look and see what I'm going to do. Uh, I think I know what he's doing, but uh, we'll see that he's going to be doing vlogs as well. So you can follow on his channel how his progress is going. And obviously my regular weekly vlogs will contain my updates uh, like this. And uh, we'll also, um, I'll also be bundling it together into that video on the 25th. There will also be a couple of live streams. So watch out for those. One of them will be just on Travis's channel. I think maybe even behind the Patreon wall. So you'll have to Patreon if you want to watch that. Uh, but the other one will be shared to the wider community and will be on my channel channel as well as his. So yes, this is all about a lot of a learning curve. I've not done winter terrain very much at all and I've never done a live stream. So yeah, great stuff. So anyway, let's point the camera down and I'll show you what my plans are. When we first started talking about this, I thought, you know what, I need to get some ideas. And I went on to Google, which is what you do, and I saw a picture of this book and I thought, hang on a minute, I've got that. And you know what, I did. <laughs> so I was able to dig this out, which is a fantastic book by Pat Smith um, for Winter War Game Ring, which is exactly the subject we need. And I've had a flick through and I think I've come up with a couple of ideas that I can use to do some good winter terrain following the instructions in this book. As I say, I'm not a winter terrain specialist. I'm showing you how I do it. I'm certainly not trying to pretend to be a specialist here, but hopefully this might help if you're looking at doing something similar. Similar. So first of all, I've been looking at this log barricade and bunker defences. So this is going to be a little bit closer to what I normally do. Um, if you watch the uh, channel, I'll probably make one or two of these and I might make them in a slightly different pattern. So this one here has got, I um, don't know how well you can see it, but this one here has got uh, wooden boards and this one here is made of logs. So yeah, we'll, we'll have a play around with that and there'll be a, a lot of fun to do um, with the uh, making it look snowy. So that would be a couple of my scatter terrain pieces. And I also think I might have um, a pack gun, which I might be able to make as well as part of this and put, in, put into the emplacements. That would be pretty cool. The second thing I'm going to do is a frozen pond and lake. This is just for fun because I want to learn how to do it and I think it will look really good. And it will be a lot of, and it'll also just be quite a cool, hopefully quick project to build. The final one that I've decided on now, and there may be more I do, I may pick some more up through the project, through the month, um, is I'm going to be winterizing some buildings. Now I have these from Sarissa, and here is the one that I'm going to winterize. These are uh, 172 scale, tw um, they're 20 millimeter buildings, um, and I've already put them on a terrain tile system base, so I might even end up building the um, these the pond um, and building the uh, bunkers on my Sarissa train tile system that might make a lot of sense to be honest but anyway there we are so that's um, that's going to be uh, winterized using the techniques that he describes in this book so hopefully this is gonna be fun hopefully you'll enjoy this video hopefully you'll maybe join in and maybe build some winterized terrain yourself and uh, um, let, let us see it somehow. I'm not sure how, we'll work that out. Um, we are going to be potentially doing updates on uh, Facebook and on Instagram and we'll come up with a hashtag and I'll make sure that that is publicized so that you can uh, follow along if you want to see and if you want to build your own, you can join in as well. So let's get making. As I thought, I did have a box here, which I've had for a little while, a German gun set, which has the Pack 37, the Pack 40 and a Flak Villing 38 as you can see here. So what I'm going to do is actually, um, now that I've found those, is I'm going to see whether I can't make a bunker for each one. Um, and I might see if I can't make the whole, um, make them all up. This is part of this. So I have a load of the terrain tile system, as you can see. Um, 
I don't seem to have all that many of the smaller shapes because I used a lot of them for putting onto the tray onto those uh, um, on those houses on. But I've got four here, so that should be sufficient. I've got three for that, and then what I can do is I can do a larger one for a for the for the pond. Um, so that'd be pretty good. So I might be able to do everything that I'm doing here on Sarissa Terrain Tile, which would be really cool because I've wanted to use it for a while. I haven't bought it a couple of years back and then not really found a use for it. So I'll be trying to make these up um, and that's probably where I'm going to start because when I, if I can start on these and if I can also continue on just dragging in another project, um, the um, this um, half track um, KFC 251, that's it, um, which you can see is in progress, it's primed or what have you. That's also something that I want to have done for part of this um, um, for this project, just, as, just to take a photograph. It's not actually part of it, I just like to complete it. But if I can get these done, then I can get a scale and get a size and I can start working on the bunker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself up here, get all my kit together, and I'll bring you along as I go into this and start gluing it together and look to painting it. So yeah, let's get stuck in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the pack 40. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead with the sprue and I'm going to clip out the parts I think I'm going to need. And look into this, it's not really going to work very well with, a, with the camera running. So what I'll do is I'll get, it, I'll get some stuff done and then I'll bring you along and show you how where I'm up to. Um, but you'll just be subjected to a lot of me going, hmm, if I try to run the camera the whole time. So this is the sprue I'm going to be working on. This is all the instructions I've got. Um, I've got some instructions back here actually, that's good. One, two, so that's the first one, and that's the second one. Okay, I'm a little bit confused. I'm gonna dig into this and I'll bring you back when I've done a little bit more research and when I know what I'm doing, and, uh, and then yeah, we'll, um, we'll build this together. I worked out the confusion, I was looking at the wrong page. So the number two I was that I was referring to was actually to the previous gun. So I've made one of the little figures and now I'm working on the actual gun and I might regret trying to film this, but I'm so impressed with the actual build that I wanted to show you. So it's designed so that the barrel can continue to move. <laughs> which I'm going to keep try and do. So what, what you've got is you've got, the, uh, just in here you've got a little hole, and you've got one on the other side as well, and, and you've got two parts that actually glue together just along the bottom edge here, just down here. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put some glue here, and then drop that on top, getting the pin in but not gluing the pin, and then when that's gone off, when that's dried, which doesn't take long with this um, cement, then the gun should still move, which is pretty cool. Um, means that you can put it in whatever position you want, um, and you could also potentially even um, glue it in place if you want to once you're happy with the position, but it means that you've still got all the flexibility of where you're going to place it. Now I know that this isn't how you're supposed to use Tamiya Super Thin, um, however I find it works well just as an initial bond and then you can come along and position it correctly when you're happy. But you need to build a bit faster than I am. So the problem here is getting it to actually match up with my big clumsy fingers. I'm trying to keep this in shot as well. It's only going to make that problem a little bit harder. There we are, we're in. We're in. So now that I've got that pinched together and with a little bit of the Tamiya just kind of acting as a pre-seal, what we can do is we can come along with some more of the Tamiya and it will wick in and act as a cement. There we are. So, so long as I've not made a stupid mistake, that should now hopefully dry nicely. So I'm going to start to sit here and hold this and I'll bring you back when I've finished sitting here and holding this and show you what it looks like. <laughs> and we get to the end of the evening and we have one created pack 40 and one little dude to go with him. I'm not gonna go too crazy because this is a this is scattered terrain, not making miniatures, but it's nice to have got this done. And this does show me that actually, I'm not gonna be using one of the smaller ones. I'm gonna make a bunker with on this normal sized tile. Excuse me, so what I'll be doing is, uh, not tonight, because it's now late and I need to get to bed because I've got work in the morning, uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to model a bunker with a firing slit um, and um, make sure that there's space for this 
model to sit in it so that will then give me my first bit of scatter drain so pretty pleased about that very happy to have got that built um, it was fiddly as hell um, I will get the other two built and make some bunkers around them as well uh, but now I'm, I can make a start on the real thing but that won't happen until tomorrow I have just spent all evening working on a really good idea that I decided when I got right to the end of it that it was rubbish. So let me show you what it was <laughs> and then uh, I'll show you what I'm actually going to do. So what I was looking at was using these big tiles and I've made a bunch of cardboard bases for my guns and I showed a way of using um, basically what you do to make a cardboard base uh, it was a really good idea actually and I will use it again in another video but let me quickly show you what you do is you get yourself something that isn't going to warp uh, and clamp your base uh, your your cardboards to that bottom but make your cardboard bigger than what you want so this is what I was going to keep and I've clamped this to that base and then when all the scenicing whatever is done on there then I can cut it out and it won't have warped so I was going to show you that in more detail but I think probably I've covered it entirely there and then I've sat and I've looked at it as you can see in front of you here here is my pack 40 which I have primed down and is ready for painting and it's just way too big I mean it's pointless isn't it it's absolutely pointless so what I then did was I found my final four of the small tiles and I think <laughs> having decided to not use them I think they're actually going to be perfect now what it is going to mean is that I'm going to um, glue the gun actually to the base so I'm not going to need to fanny around as much I was going to do swappable out I was going to have a um, this area here was going to be left and I was going to make a base um, that had the gun glued to it and a base that didn't and then I'd be able to swap it in and out all out the window so we're going to make our let's get rid of them they're not going to be wasted but um, I now only have uh, have none of these little ones left so I've actually just a second placed an order with Sarissa for some more because they are very useful uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to work on this base and uh, never mind about the waste of time that is much better I think you'll agree so um, let's uh, gather some materials together and then let's get started on making this bunker for my pack 40 there we are. As you can see, what I've done is I've drawn a little shape, which is roughly what's going to be the shape for my bunker for this particular gun. And I've got my balsa wood out, which I'm running a little bit low on, so I'm going to need to get some more. The instructions in the book say to get twigs, but I actually want to use balsa because it's going to be easier to use um, and I can always paint it and make it look nice. Of course, twigs is a good, is a good enough suggestion, um, but for me, I think that I'm going to use balsa. So how I'm going to do this is I will be uh, using the hot glue gun which I don't often like to use and I'll probably end up coating this with a PVA as well the hot glue is going to be quick so the hot glue gun is currently hot, heating up and I'm going to mark out and cut some lengths of this thin balsa because I'm doing 20 mil one, roughly 172 176 whatever scale it is this gun is 172 and I will end up with some balsa wood stacked up on top of each other like that um, and I'll probably glue two or three up and then I'll do a firing slot where I'll cut it and uh, I'll cut them shorter and stick them either way either side of where the gun is so uh, what I'll do is I will cut some lengths like that maybe three on each side so six lengths like that and then I'll bring you back when the hot glue gun is warm and we'll start gluing them in and the hot glue gun is hot so what we'll do is we'll run a bead down this line here and put our first one in so there's a bead of hot glue and there is our first uh, thing down now what I'm also going to be doing is putting a little bit of hot glue here and here and putting some uprights in like so and this will give me a nice guide for doing the rest of the um, the, re the rest of the, the uprights on the side the rest of the planks on the side so one there one there the good thing with this is obviously I'm going to be scenicking this heavily and so those stringy bits will get covered up with grout and other things so there are the uprights and then what we'll do is we'll do a bead down here
and we'll put one in. So there we are. And with that done, we can start to build this up. So all I need to do is make sure, I hate hot glue sometimes, is make sure that I don't go too high because I want to have this little gun pointing out through a slot at the front. So I think I'm gonna be able to get two underneath there. So let me just check that. It's one, can I get hole two? Not quite, so I'm gonna get one and then I'm going to want to potentially split one in half, which potentially they would have done, so I'm happy enough with doing that. So let me do that front now, and then I'm going to want to have one that goes all the way across over the top, so I'm going to need either to have a longer length come in here so that I can then have a, um, a log going over the top. So first of all, let's glue this front one in. And then we'll quickly split this in half. I say quickly. Try not to cut my finger. And there we are. There we are. So that now can go on top. Now when we pop the gun in, we can see that that fits very nicely over the top of that, uh, that uh, over the top of that, and will look really, really suitable. So let's build the rest up. I'll pop some music on and get this done. Well there we are, messy with all the hot glue, which I, as I said before, I really don't like. But I think that's gonna look really nice. That's a really, really cool little bunker. And the gun, which I will paint up in the morning so that it is done and ready and can be glued in place as soon as I'm ready, will fit through in there very nicely with its muzzle protruding. So it has a bit of a kind of like traverse and what I might end up doing actually, let me actually drop the camera down a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So as you can see, there's not actually all that much protection at the front. So what I think I need to do is put three or four more of these uprights in place along the front. So I'll get that done now. I'll measure up in the same way, glue them in place, and then I'll bring you along when I come to the next stage, which is gonna be painting. Next step for this, now this is nicely dried, is to do the base. So to put a base coat and uh, have that kind of texture being put down. And I'm gonna do that with grout and sand and PVA mix, which I use quite a lot in a lot of my builds. So you've probably seen this before, uh, but I'll quickly show you if you haven't, if you're new to the channel. What I do is I take a spoonful and I do this just based on guesswork of the grout. I then have some sand, which I'll just open the bucket makes a bit of a noise. I have some sand that I picked up from the back bank. So it is literally just sand for the back bank. And I put an equal amount of sand and grout together in there. What I then do is get some PVA glue and mix it. So I'll pop about an equal amount of PVA glue as well, actually, funnily enough. So it's about one to one to one of PVA glue, of grout, I'm using brown in this case, and of, of, of the sand, which is very, very fine. It's almost like dust. And what I then do is I put a very small amount of water in, not very much at all. You don't want to overload it. I might even have put too much in there in my haste. And then you start stirring. And as I always say, when I'm doing this section of my videos, this stuff doesn't want to, doesn't want to mix, as you can see. It's just trying to stay apart. It's trying not to, not to combine. But with the, with the uh, sand in there and with the PVA, it's actually a little easier. If you try and do this without that, it's harder. So just keep going and eventually it will combine. Now, yes, as I thought, I slurped a little bit too much water in there. So I'm going to need to 
add some more grout and some more sand, but that's fine because I do actually have something else that I want to do with this as well, so it won't be wasted. So I think about the same amount again of each. And obviously a little bit more PVA as well. And then mix that up as well. You can see it doesn't take very long, but you don't want it to be too sloppy. That was far, far too loose. You want it to be looking a little bit more like this. Right, there we are. That's the consistency that we're looking for. It should be, it should move, but not be runny. So what we now do is we get ourselves a brush and you want a brush that you don't care about too much. It shouldn't be one of your, one of your special brushes uh, because this stuff does get everywhere and it's pretty nasty. Um, and obviously you don't want to ruin a nice brush, but you do literally just paint it on and it is as easy as that. So what I'll do is I'm gonna cover the whole of the base of this with this. Um, and you can see the texture is really nice. It really works well. So I'm gonna paint the base of this with the uh, grout mixture and then I'll leave it to dry. And I might even paint the whole thing, including the wood. And we can sort out the colours. This will just give it a texture. And fill in the gaps a bit, make it a little bit more knackered looking and old. Because this is clearly a prepared position. They've probably been there a while. Don't put it on too thick. It might cause warping. But you can see already you're getting a really nice kind of texture that you could use gloss paint on and uh, turn into mud or what have you. I'm going to stop rambling and get this done. And there we are, that's done. So the good thing with this is that it does actually dry quite quickly if you leave it in the air. But if you put some cling film over the top of that bowl, that will stay good for a good day or two. What I'll do is I'll quickly zoom in so you can see a little bit more in the detail of how that texture is. And that's looking really, really nice. So I'll let that to dry and then I'll come back for the next step, which will be dry brushing and then we'll be adding details. And then it's nearly done. That's a really, really quick build. Um, and what I'll do is I will start preparing my next bit of scatter terrain for this particular project. The next thing I'm going to be working on is winterizing the buildings. And I'm going to follow the instructions relatively closely, though obviously I may do a few things differently as I often do. So what they suggest is with the MDF buildings, upgrade them a little by filling in any visible joins with tile grout. Now uh, I have some uh, tile grout obviously, which I've just mixed up, which I can use, but I've also got some wood filler. So I'm going to try out the wood filler and if it doesn't work, then I'll have learned something and I can always, uh, I've got other buildings as well that I can always use uh, and try the tile tile grout on and I will be coming across with more tile grout anyway once this is done because that's the next step so what I'll do is I've got a little spatula as you can see and I'm just going to come along and this is literally polyfiller which I've had for a little while so it's a little bit gloopy but we're just going to come along and fill those little gaps so I'll get this done pop some music on or turn the camera off one of the two but I'm only doing the one building at this stage so it's not going to take very long for me to just do this as you can see I've already done one side so I'll get that done and uh, then we'll look at the next step which will probably have to have wait until this has dried which won't take long so it might be this evening but I'll get on with that Well, there we are, that's uh, sealed up those gaps. So what I'll do is I'll let that dry and then I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. <clears throat> I'm very pleased to say that these have dried. They don't take very long. It's only been about an hour. I've just been painting some miniatures, but you don't care about that. So I'm going to now make use of the grout mixture, which I mixed up and mixed too much of, and I'm gonna paint it all over these. Now, I'm not worrying too much about the interior just yet. I'm not going to do the interiors, I don't think, as part of this build. It's because that's a whole other subject. But I might end up glazing the windows but and the doors. But what we're going to do now is just going to paint this grout mix, which I mixed up before, over the whole of the building. 
can do it quite thin, I don't want to go overload it, I don't want to kill any details, but I do want to cover the whole thing. And because I'm using brown grout, this actually means that I can skip the next step, which is then paint it brown. Anyway, enough rambling, let's get it done. There we are, and I have loads left over. So I'll save that again with the cling film and use it for another part of this project. There we are, I'm pleased about that. That's good progress this evening. I will now uh, go to bed. The bunker for my pack 40 is coming on nicely. So what I'm gonna do now is something a little different. I'm going to do a kind of trench system kind of thing or, an, or a dug in bank for, uh, for, for people, for, for our soldiers to be in. So what I've got here is one of the wider terrain tile systems. Funnily enough, again, this is the final one of this size I've got. <laughs> um, I've got more coming now though. Uh, and I've got some leftover uh, foam as you can see, some leftover XPS. So what I'm going to be doing is making use of this leftover stuff to build up the terrain. So the shape will roughly be like this. Um, so I'll cut away like this and I'll be able to make use of the overhang which I don't need on the other side of this uh, of the, that's hanging over each of the edges to put here and here and then that will mean that I've got a nice shape which I can then scenic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that out and cut that out and then glue it in place. So I will, I will do that now. I have my pencil here. So my thinking is that I will probably clamp this in place. So let me get a couple of clamps because what I actually need to do if I'm going to be relatively clever on this is I'm going to need to turn it over and cut and make sure that I'm not going over the edge where the uh, terrain tile system has its not quite random kind of pattern that allows it to tessellate. So what we'll do is we will clamp our tiles into place like this. So I'll get that done. Okay, so now we've got our tiles in place. What I can do is I've got my pencil here and I can draw along this line. Now, clearly I'm not gonna be kind of cutting along this line as such, but all I need to make sure is that I don't go over it. So this is a guide that will help me to know where the extent of my board is, not a line that I'm gonna cut along religiously. I just need to avoid it. Okay, so that's that. And what we'll do now is we'll just roughly mark out the inner one as well. So with that done, I can take my clamps off and we can now start to actually carve out the extent of what we want. So you can see, actually, it's, on this one, it pretty much doesn't matter, but on these ones, it matters a little bit. So probably what I need to do, well, what I should have done is actually marked which was gonna be which. So the way to do that, very quickly and simply, is draw lines so that they have to match up, and then you can get them back like that. So this is straight and this is diagonal and that way I know the orientation. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll turn the camera off because it doesn't make a very nice sound. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna trim down there, do the same technique on the bottom, so make sure I get it right there. And then I will draw and I'll carve out the shape and I'll bring it back when that's done and when I'm about to glue. As you can see, I've done a little bit of shaping. I've cut the shape out here and I've just used cocktail sticks for now to hold everything in place because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this down to this base and then leave it and that's gonna be a good place for me to finish up for the evening. And then when that's dry, I can come along and I can shave off and shape and reduce the height where I want to and what have you because I can pull the actual uh, cocktail sticks out because they're getting in the way at the moment, but they are being very useful. So I'm gonna use my favorite gator glue. So what we'll do is we will put cater glue on the bottom on the foam like this and then we will just weight it down with weights as I normally do 
and leave it to go off and that'll be ready for the next stage tomorrow morning when I wake up. So we will put that in place carefully like this and then maybe we'll actually clamp it. Maybe we will clamp it. Yeah, we'll clamp it. Why not? I like my clamps. So we'll just clamp these in place and then leave it to go off. So I'll get that done and I'll bring you back when I get to the next step, which will be maybe tomorrow if I get time. This is dried and I've shaped it and very, very happily my mix that I made for the other builds in this is still good <laughs> against all the odds. I've just added a little bit of water, given it a stir and it's still useful. So what I'm now going to do, and I, um, this is just the first layer of this that I'm going to apply, is I'm just going to paint this all over the whole of it. So I'll get that done and then when that's dry I'll show you the next step. I'm actually just mid watching a live stream with Travis as it happens, so I am going to drop off recording so I can get back to it <laughs> and do this while I'm watching. But I did want to just quickly show this stage on camera. So yeah, I'll be back when I come to the next process. I am going to make two frozen ponds, I think. At least one, which I'm doing now, and another one maybe with another technique if I, if I can be bothered. Ironically enough, I only have red air dry clay because I ran out of all my white air dry clay when, uh, when I was doing Rosie's um, train, the Santa's Express. So I'm going to need to do this red and then paint it, but that's fine, doesn't matter. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, roll it out flat, and then I have the frozen green stuff roll roller which I want to give a try so we're going to do that so let me get it rolled out flat first and then we'll see just how good that green stuff world roller is so there we are I've gone for an odd shape because what I'm going to do is obviously this is going to be a frozen pond so this is going to be the frozen bit and once I've rolled this out and it's dry which is not my usual technique but once it's dry i will then transfer that over onto a base build some banks and do the rest of the scenicking um, i don't normally do that this way but i think in this case this is going to be the most efficient way to do it so what i'm going to do now is have a go with this roller and there we are we will now peel that off and we'll put it on some glass so that it doesn't stick or maybe onto some non-stick paper and then when it's dry we'll have a look at it we'll be able to maybe um, we'll cover over any bits that haven't pressed in quite as well let me zoom in a little bit so you can see how that looks it's okay it's not brilliant it may be needed to be slightly smaller which uh, which might be it might be something I find and if it is then I can always roll over another one or I might be able to roll a one right now. But that's what the uh, broken, the ice roller frozen from Green Stuff World looks like. I might just reduce the quantity of the clay I'm using and make it a little bit smaller so that I can do it in one cut. So let me just do that. There we are, that's better. So that can be underneath the bank when I make the bank. So I'll let that dry and I'll bring you along for the next step when I get to it. Change of plan, I have just had a look and cannot find any glass that is not outside and it is late at night and I'm not going out there because it's cold. So what I'm going to do is put it straight onto a base. And the base I'm going to be using is this foam XPS insulation, which I like quite a lot. Um, I can glue this on and then I can clamp it, which I'll show you, to a solid surface to make sure it doesn't warp and then work on it and then remove it from that solid surface once I'm finished working. So as always glue down your air dry clay because it's not adhesive so it will not it will stick to things and it will break when you try and peel it off but it certainly isn't going to stick to them in such a hard wearing way as it will be what useful on the gaming table. So now that's stuck to the or sticking to that base let me grab my other couple of little bits of kit and uh, I'll actually get to show you this. I was going to show you on the build for the gun emplacement um, and now I've got a chance to actually show you this technique for real. So what I've done is I have grabbed this which is a 
a small shelf from a unit that we didn't need. It's actually a unit that's in Rosie's room and we didn't need all the shelves. So I stole the spare ones. And what you do very, very simply is you clamp your base to that. So you get yourself something which isn't gonna warp and then you clamp the material that you're worried might warp to said base, like so. Using clamps are all the same so that you end up with a nice solid base because this will now stay clamped until I've finished. And then when I've finished, I will be able to cut the bit that I want out and the, the, it will not be warped at all and all the drying will have done and therefore we'll be happy. So I'm going to let this to dry now. I, the next step will be painting. After that I'll put a base around it. Um, so I'll put a little, little ridge around it which, um, and maybe extend it a bit so that it can um, smooth into the surrounding area. Um, and then it's done. It's not a very complicated process, I don't think this. The painting is gonna be the fun part. I'm gonna now do some research on how best to paint ice on red. I think I'm gonna need to do a very good primer. This is now really nicely stuck. And what I did do, which I didn't film because it was just a very quick sudden thought, is I lifted the air dry clay and got my um, scarer, so it's actually a wire brush, and I scored up, as you can see, the entirety of the area and all around it, which just meant that this was just quite a shiny base, had a little bit of tooth, and therefore it was able to take a bit better. So that's all I did, and it dried nice and it's solid. So what I'm gonna do now is paint the whole thing white and I think this is going to take a couple of coats um, and I've just noticed that the brush I'm using is one that didn't wash properly I'm, we're having a lot of trouble with water here at the moment and it's been real pain to try and keep my brushes clean when you don't have any water <laughs> um, so there's this this first coat isn't going to be great but I'll probably do two or three coats of white just to put down the base and then I'll start to come in with some washes of blues and what have you to make it look like ice um, so yeah, I'll do that. Um, I'll do a couple of coats. I'll let you know how many it takes. And then when it's done, I will uh, bring you along for the next colors, but it doesn't take long as you can see. Just a nice basic coat. This is just with a cheap house paint. Cool, let that dry. Come back maybe two or three coats I reckon, and then we'll be ready for the next colors. Scatter terrain piece number five is going to be a haystack and I'm going to just make one because I want to have a bit of a play around um, but uh, yeah I'm going to follow the instructions in the book pretty much to the letter for this one because I think it sounds like a really cool idea so what they suggest is to use the top of a spray can now I, I go through quite a lot of, sort of rattle cans or as they used to I use them far less now um, but I've got these and I've got other pots that I could use to make different size ones which I might do um, so this is just an old spray can as you can see and what I've done is I've taken some of the black foam and made it into a base and beveled it now what it says to do is use hot glue to glue it down now I'm not a big fan of hot glue but it does work so we will run a bead of hot glue around the base of this and get that glued in place. Now the good thing with it, if you don't stick your hot glue tripod in it, which I just did, which was a bit silly, wasn't it? The good thing with hot glue is it goes off immediately. <laughs> so there's no faffing, there's no wor wor worrying around, there's no drying time, it's just done turn the hot glue gun off. So the next step it says is to stick some blue foam onto the top, put the hot glue gun back on, <laughs> uh, so that you get a domed appearance. Now I've just realized I didn't do that, so I'm gonna quickly grab some blue foam and I will get that shaped and I'll bring you back when I've shaped it. So there you are, a blow, blue dome of blue foam. <laughs> so the next thing it says is to paint them with a light brown coffee color. So, sorry, no. Start that again. Cut, cut. So there you are, I've stuck some foam on the top in a dome pattern, so that should be good. So what it then says is you need to cover them all over with towel grout to get rid of the uniform shape. Now, I've left this pot in the fridge for a few days since I used it, and as you can see, it is still good. I did put a, a um, cling foam over the top, and I did add a little bit of water and that is still usable, definitely for what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna use a, t a, a palette knife to smear this all over. Now it says to then paint it in a, in a 
um, with a pale coffee, which I will do, but um, this being brown will also just help with that. So I'm going to paint that all over everything, or paint, I'm going to use the uh, tile grout, to, uh, the palette knife, sorry, to put that everywhere, including over the base. Um, and that will then give us that nice kind of uneven look that we're looking for. So I'll get that done, basically like this. And when it's dry and I come to the next step, I'll bring you back for that. Nice and quick, this. The haystack dried nicely. It's cracked a little bit, but that's not going to be a problem because we're about to cover it. So the next step is uh, to use coconut coir, which you can see here. Now he says that he cut up a coir doormat, doormat into thin strips with a sharp knife and then use an old pair of scissors to cut and collect all the offcuts from the mat. The next task was to paint the haystack domes lids with white PVA glue and cover them with the offcuts from the doormat. Now I happen to have a big roll of coir that I ordered, in, which was massively cheaper than trying to buy it in small. And I've had it for years and it'll probably run out eventually, but certainly not anytime soon. So I have lots and lots of coir, which is really, really cool. So I use this for making trees as well. So what I'll be doing is I will just be literally tearing off sections like this, getting my PVA, and it's just painted on. And I might do this over a a slower period so I might do half and then half just so that I've got something to hold on to because it is a bit of a pain I'm trying to do this without having anywhere to hold on to but yeah so we'll paint some PVA on I've put a bit on the base but I really shouldn't have done because I should really be um, not be putting <coughs> excuse me I've got a frog in my throat not be putting too much hay around the uh, around the base but anyway there we are so we'll put a bit of pva around it then we'll take our coconut coir and we'll stick it on literally just like that so get rid of any lumps or anything that's too big now what you might end up finding that you do is coming back in and putting more glue on once it's once it's dried because this might peel off I think so we'll find that out I'm not totally sure about this technique however I am following the book and I'm happy to give it a go but I would have said that you're going to need to douse this in PVA again otherwise it'll all fall off however once it's on I think it will look quite good it's a bit messy at the moment you might also want to uh, trim some of the coconut coir once you've got it dried on so we're going to come in here and we're going to mat it on and like I say I'm going to potentially leave the back do this maybe in a couple of applications because yeah it's a bit messy at this I think that's far enough for now. I feel like if I play any more with that, I'll damage it or make it worse. So I'll let that dry overnight, come back, do the same thing again, put some more coconut on, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. And I think if you build this up in layers, that's gonna be a more effective way to do it, and it'll be more hard wearing as well. I've been humming and a little bit about the next step on this. I obviously need to continue with the painting, <clears throat> but after some thought, I've decided that what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the bank around the edge of this pond, which is only going to be very low. I don't want this to be a massively high profile thing. Uh, and I'm going to use Luke's bottling compound to build this bank. So I'm just mixing it up now, as you can see, just off camera. <laughs> and what I'll do is I will just put a very low bank around the outside of the ice area. And that means that I can then paint and what have you, uh, mask off what I need to do. The, all of the physical elements will be there and I won't have to worry about potentially getting a beautiful ice effect, <laughs> which I'm still not totally sure how to do, um, and then screw it up by dropping some compound in all over the place. So what I'll be doing is I'll be coming in like this and making a low bank around, the, sorry, <coughs> got a bit of a frog in my throat this morning. Uh, just doing this very quickly before work um, so that it can go off while I'm working. But yeah, just sculpt a very, very shallow bank around the outside of this, just to give a little bit of elevation. 
Um, I know a lot of people complain about rivers that aren't flat on the battlefield, and I do understand that. But also, you do find that quite a lot of the time, whether by natural or by human interaction, there is actually a small bank around things. Um, <clears throat> maybe because to make, prevent flooding or whatever, the hum humans have come along and built the bank up. So having a, a very small rise around the outside of a water is actually prototypical, to use a uh, model railroader's term. I don't think it should be massively high unless you're doing a dam. Um, but there's nothing to say this isn't a human, this isn't a man-made. Anyway, stop muttering, get this done. And then when this has gone off, then we can start to paint and scenic the rest of this little scatter terrain piece. If you managed to catch the first of my live streams yesterday, um, which was for Harry, um, for charity, you'll have seen what I did was, as part of the stream, I did a very quick build of how to make hedges and fences even um, on the live stream and he built along and it was great fun. Uh, I came out of that with quite a few half built fences and so what I've decided to do is to finish them off and do them as winter terrain. So these, this will be my final of the six pieces of scatter terrain. It will be five fences that are done with snow on them. So a little bit today, I've not got very much time to hobby now around Christmas as generally is when my hobby time reaches its lowest availability of time which is all good um, I, I managed to get time to add on um, the cross pieces uh, some of them are basically of, this was there's one that's got both on already and the rest of all only got the lower one on so probably during the day tomorrow when I get a few minutes I will also get stuck in finish the tops and then I'll start to flock so that's what I'm doing for the um, for the final piece of the winter eyes for Christmas. If you missed the second live stream, then uh, it's on my channel and it was great fun and I had so much of a laugh and thank you everyone that watched and uh, go and check it out. And we did that, we had a great time building terrain and talking about the hobby and, and just had a really, really good chat. These are now all dried nicely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my wood stain and this is African teak color, very dark, the darkest one I've got. And I'm just going to paint all of the wood with the wood stain. Just like that. And that will give it a nice color and I can come along if I want to and age it and what have you. But it just gives it a nice strong dark color which I think will contrast nicely with the snow effect. So I'm going to get this done slowly through the day, I don't have very much time. I'm just uh, quickly grabbing this in a, in a coffee break or a tea break to get this started and uh, yeah so I'll get all these done through the day um, and I'll bring you along for the next step when I get to it which will probably now be tonight or tomorrow I'm not sure this is probably all the hobbying I'll get done today the hardest part of this is actually having a smaller amount on your brush so what you can see is I do, as I try, I, it, it builds up in places and I'll go back and remove it and keep spreading. So rather than going back to the pot, I'm looking at where it's gathered, where it's been dragged off by being caught in a, on a lip or something. <coughs> and then I, uh, I spread that around a bit more. So there we are. It's a simple technique, but it does take a little bit of time. So I'll get that done and I'll bring you back later. So this is how far I got this build while I was doing the live stream with Travis last Sunday, which was incredibly fun, and we will do another one, I'm sure. Uh, so you can see that we've got the, um, I've put some of my um, tufts on, and also this was made with <coughs> untwisted twine, which looks quite nice, actually, I'm quite pleased with it. However, what I have realised I did was I didn't actually paint the... Um, Paint the, 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 the soil then. <laughs> so what I've got to do now is just come along with this kind of ready brown, which is what I want it to be, and just fill in. Now, because it's winter, I'm lucky. <laughs> uh, white will just look like frost, but I don't want it to be completely white. That would be rubbish. So let's uh, just come along here with this brush and very carefully paint around the edges to get some soil colour. So I'll do that. And then when it's done, I'll bring you along and uh, show you the next step, which will probably be working again on the ice. 
I'm not going to make the same mistake with these and put the, uh, the tufts on too soon. So now these are ready for painting. I'm going to use the same kind of reddy brown. I quite like it. Um, it doesn't paint on very nicely, unfortunately, so I'll probably have to do a couple of coats to get it to be complete. Um, but then these will be ready for tufts and then snow. Now what I'm hoping for is that my shop bought snow effects might arrive today or in the next couple of days and then I can finish these off using that and give it a try so I can compare and contrast my homemade attempt with these. But we'll see, that's all dependent on, on post <laughs> which is proving to be very unreliable all over the world at the moment. So yeah, fingers crossed. Anyway, onwards. Just thought I'd uh, bring you along for this little bit. I've been, I've used the um, <coughs> tiles that you get from Sarissa, the pre-cut tiles, which I really, really like because they're really, really easy to use and they save me time and I'm a bit lazy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, this red paint to just go over the top and paint it. Um, now I will bring you back when that's uh, when I'm uh, done and ready to do the um, do the snow because I've realised that this and my fences are probably going to be the only things that will be on this video showing actually how I did the snow because I did most of it on the live stream. So um, I'll get this ready and get the fences ready with uh, some more flocking and what have you and then I'll bring you back next time when I'm doing the snow because that will be basically the end which I'm really really pleased about. I've obviously not gone the done the Stuka Zufus uh, but that's okay. Uh, it's very very close um, uh, but getting these done um, I'm, I've been really enjoying this build. Uh, by the time you see this in the vlog it will already have been published because I'm publishing this on Christmas Day as a Christmas gift to you all. Anyway, I'll get this painted, we'll be ready, and then we'll come back for the final steps. And so we come to pretty much the last step of this build, which is making the... <coughs> is that the... And so we come to pretty much the last step of this video and these builds. So I did this step on other parts of this build via on during the really fun live stream I did with uh, Travis. However, I have these fences, I have the frozen lake, and I have the roof of the house. Now you can see that around the base, we have some snow effects already. This was done during the live stream, and you can see just how effective that is. Also do a little bit of color. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put snow uh, down on these bases. Now what I'm probably gonna focus on doing is I'll work on one of my fences while I'm on, on camera. Um, and I'll also potentially do a little bit of work just on the roof as well, because those are the two things which I think are gonna be the most complex. So what I'll do is I will focus the camera down a little bit more specifically in this area, show you how I mix it up. I'm using poor man's snow effects with baking soda, unfortunately, because my uh, purchased stuff has got caught up in the Christmas rush and just hasn't arrived. <laughs> um, so this is gonna show you how to make this with baking soda and uh, how to apply it, just how quick and easy it is. So I'll point the camera down and uh, let's get this done. Okay, so the materials that you'll need is baking soda, which I keep in this old yeast pot, but it is baking soda, as you can see. You want some white paint, I just use clean white, that's what that says, just or bielo, clean white, house paint, don't buy any special paint for that, the cheapest stuff you can find, and then PVA glue. And those are the three items that you will need. So I do this very much by eye, quite often I get it wrong, but basically you take some baking soda, put it into a little pot, and put that out of the way so I won't knock it over. <laughs> I then get some white paint, potentially about the same, roughly the same quantity, roughly the same volume as baking soda, and I put that in, and then that can get moved out of the way. And finally we put some PVA in. Now it might be that I've made this with a little bit too little of the baking soda, and if that's the case then I will add some more baking soda. So once you've done that, you then mix it together. And what you end up with is quite a dry paste is what you're aiming for. So yes, it looks like I've put too much liquid in that, quite a lot too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put more baking soda in. Now I've got quite a lot of 
the snow to make so I'm not too worried at this stage about over making there we are that's starting to look a little bit better so I apologize my quantities were out what you want is about the same volume of baking soda as the combination of white paint and PVA there we are that's looking good that's a pretty good consistency so once you've got that stirred I either use the same thing so like a palette or some, something which you can um, which you stir or an old brush to apply it it does wash off if you clean it quickly so you can use any brush and they won't completely ruin them but an old brush is probably best and then what I do is I stipple it on I don't brush it on I stipple it on which is why you can use anything you don't need to use a brush I sometimes find a brush that just gives me a little bit more control and that's it it is literally as simple as that now some people have had problems with this yellowing I know that Travis himself said that he had problems with it yellowing when using this technique and I haven't yet <laughs> not to say I won't obviously because never say never but so far I haven't and I did this technique when I was painting up some Iron Hills dwarves and I was basing them and I used this technique to put snow on their bases and that was quite a long time ago now several years and they haven't yet yellowed so your mileage may vary as they say but mine with this technique has been pretty good now I do have I think some woodland scenics snow effects coming as I've said um, and I will do a follow-up video when they arrives to have a look at that but this is all I've got at the moment so this is all I can use so yeah you can see it's a very simple technique to apply um, just try to think about where snow might be I'm not doing an overloaded snow here I'm doing it maybe where it's melted a bit so um, I'm not going to try and cover the whole thing but just try and think where it might be in the prototype have a look at photographs if you're not sure and ultimately just do what you want nature is very random so I'm going to get this done and I'm going to finish off applying that to the other fences and also to the other parts of this roof and I'll bring you back to show you what they all look like and to wrap the video up thank you very much for watching I hope that you may have even gotten involved and done some building if you have don't forget to share it on the Instagram hashtag winter eyes for Christmas and we'll have a look and see if anyone's uh, anyone's done anything and see if there are any pictures Maybe I'll do a review of that another time as well. So if you have done it, let me know via that hashtag. Thank you very much. Now we come to cutting this off the base <clears throat> and you'll see just how successful it was in terms of preventing it from warping. So I have my knife. What we'll do is we'll take the clamps off. And you can see that that is absolutely not warped. Now, if you'd have tried to do that without the clamp, it would be like a banana, I can tell you. The other benefit of using the black foam is that when I cut this, I could cut it at an angle maybe, uh, but I don't have to because it won't look too terrible because it'll have a black edge, which is a more uh, a, a smooth way of doing it. So let me get my knife and I'll cut it out. And there we are you can see just how successful that has been so I'll finish cutting this out and tidying it up and uh, we have ourselves a frozen lake now obviously I never did get to the other one the reason why I didn't get to the other method is because I don't actually have any acetate and I couldn't find any in the shops so I wasn't able to get the correct materials but maybe I'll try and get, get hold of some and do another follow-up video showing the different style of lake might be quite nice I think but let me get this cut out and then I'll bring you back to wrap up and show you all the results of everything that I've made. And there we have it, winter terrain. And honestly, I'm so impressed with how it looks. I'm really, really, really pleased. Uh, it was a really fun challenge to do, really pushed me to a new style of terrain, which I've not really done before, which was part of the whole purpose, was 
again in my, uh, out of my comfort zone and uh, I've got some really cool terrain there which can be used uh, for uh, a variety of things so most of it the uh, everything but the fences is going to be 20 mil so that'll be for World War II generally um, and the fences are obviously uh, 28 mil so they can be really useful for um, some of my other so um, SPG that sort of um, war gaming that I do uh, but it just looks great they've worked out really well using the um, poor man's snow effects has worked really nicely I think they've done a really good job that frozen lake I'm particularly pleased with I may do a little bit more touching up on that I may come in with some darker blues um, and uh, line down some of the cracks a bit and just make it pop a bit more but even as simple as it was just with that sm that light blue wash has worked really really well with that roller that I got from Green Stuff World um, yeah and the pack 40 the little bunker that's just superb I think that's possibly my favorite thing um, and then top right we've got the little uh, dugout where uh, quite a lot of people actually can probably stand um, in there and, and be sheltered and be dug in so you can have a couple of uh, mortars in there maybe or some machine guns it's just a, a cracking little set of winter scenery terrain i'm really really pleased so uh, thanks uh, travis for getting stuck in and uh, and being interested and up for doing this um, i'm very very pleased with what i've produced and i can tell you what from what i've seen of what you've done i know that what travis has done has been absolutely brilliant as well so there we are the uh, the project is completed and uh, i'm really happy as you can probably hear well that build was a lot of fun and as I've just said, really pleased with the outcome and a huge thanks to Travis for being up for give, having a little kind of like collaboration type thing with me. It's been a lot of fun. The live stream we did was just the highlight of my month. I think I really enjoyed that. And seeing these now on the desk in front of me, all together, the first time I've looked at them was just then, has really, really blown my mind. I've, the results are, are much better than I thought they would be, and I'm very happy with how they've come out. And I hope that maybe this has encouraged or inspired some of you to do some winter terrain. Don't forget to pop that on Instagram if you have, using the winterize for Christmas hashtag, and I will try and grab some of those um, and maybe do a review video if any of you do bother. <laughs> if you don't, then that's fine, obviously. This is a, a little bit of fun. Um, uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been really cool to do that so happy Christmas this video is going live on Christmas Day so this is absolutely the best of seasons greetings to all of you from me here and my family I hope that 2021 is awesome for all of you thank you so much for everything you've given me through this year just for watching my videos and commenting it means the world to me and um, hopefully with this will continue for a long time so thanks for watching this video and here's to the next one and as always, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well, and happy Christmas. <laughs>